And uh, your background is uh, you work in aerospace, right? I work in aerospace. I used to be um, well a structural engineer. So I I did a ma I have a, a bachelor's in just normal mechanical engineering, and then I did a master's in numerical analysis. So numerical structural analysis, okay. all finite element analysis and stuff like that. The major drawback of this is the enormous amount of support I had to throw away because it was printed into this uh, mm -hmm. orientation and this was all um, <laughs> all support. And with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle, you throw away a lot of support. <laughs> I've made the design a lot simpler. I was looking on, um, on Google to uh, find some simple rim designs and I found mm -hmm. one uh, with this pentagram and I thought this pentagram is uh, stronger because of these triangles and the the hub itself is uh, tensioned to the lines of these triangles so mm -hmm. I think that the pentagram was a very uh, nice and strong looking design for a five uh, bolt uh, rim and I've made everything flat at the front so when I'm printing it I can just lie it down like this so mm -hmm. i don't need any support maybe uh, a little support and i've added all these uh, bolts here well these mm -hmm. are uh, threaded rods with uh, cap nuts on uh, both sides so it will be all the, on the whole length um, so the shear force is here at the end and not here ha halfway here so i think mm -hmm. that this is a lot stronger and the spokes are simpler. And I also think that this is a lot easier to print because the problem I had with the previous design is that the it started warping because mm -hmm. it was uh, facing up uh, like this and uh, mm -hmm. the rim itself was pretty thin. So there yeah. wasn't much surface touching the, the print bed. So I think if I print it the other way around, there's a lot more surface touching the print bed. So more bed adhesion and more heat from the bed going into the part itself. P please send over uh, the CAD file. For me, it's really hard to judge which material is right and what was really the reason why the part failed. Uh, but if I have at least like just an order of magnitude where where the stresses are, I can say, okay, you are well off. Uh, that design is way better than the one that you had before. Or, oh, there are still a couple of sections on your part where some design change might make your rim be way more reliable. So I've been working in 3D printing research for, I think, almost five years now, and I'm still doing a bit of analysis, but the thing I'm really missing about my job that I did in the past was to do more simulations, more finite element analysis and stuff mm. like that. So I'm I'm usually quite happy if if I can at least do a little bit and just to make sure that my skills that I acquired years and years yeah. ago are still working. And the first big question for me was what what material are you planning to use for the second rim. I still think I'm going to use ABS again, yeah. but I have a couple of these uh, spools. And um, the reason why I used ABS was to uh, get a better feeling of how the sprinter performs. The first test I would like to do um, is due to a, a several comments. Um, some people said that it's extremely dangerous to 3D print a rim uh, due to the air pressure. And some people they they predicted that it would um, uh, it would blow up or it, that would be the point of failure the air pressure, and I think it's important to try that first uh, in the yard and um, just pressurize it and see at what point it uh, it will blow up. And I've already ordered um, uh, inner tubes. So what what do you for example do for for aerospace equipment is you have a design operating pressure which is the pressure that. Well, you usually have the system and um, all the parts get proof and burst pressure tested. A proof pressure test is like 1.5, the operating pressure. Mm -hmm. And that is the pressure that the part needs to withstand without any, um, well, detrimental effects on the parts. So this is something that is always tested with each part because before it goes out of uh, the factory okay and then there's the burst pressure test and the burst pressure test is two times the design operating pressure and this is the pressure the component needs to withstand 
without blowing up. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes if you have the capabilities and uh, if you're interested in it, uh, you can do a, a test to failure. So you test, you really in increase pressures or the loads on the parts until something fails. Because if you're in aerospace and think about lightweight design, you probably would like to know yeah, how much margin of safety did I still have? Uh, how much bars did you did you uh, pressure them? Three bars? Um, like yeah, I think 2.5 for a standard pressure. And for the test, well, my um, air compressor can go up to eight, I think. Yeah. So I will just <laughs> go up to eight and see what happens. Yeah. And um, I'm going to remove the, how is it called, uh, within the, the valve, that center. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to remove that in case we are at full pressure and for some reason <laughs> it uh, just springs loose and I've got a potential bomb in my yard <laughs> and I don't want to throw knives at it. So uh, if we are already talking about that, let me share my screen. I modeled all of the screws you have that hold the two sides together and then you have the five screws that attach the rim to the, to the hub. To the hub. Yeah. Uh, basically, the first load step that I added in the simulation was just the pretension from all of the bolts. In the next load step, um, I add the internal pressure of the uh, the tire. Your pressure is not only acting like here in the middle. You have the sides of the tire, which are quite a bit bigger, and the resulting force from all of the pressure right here from the side will be um, reacted right here on the sides of the rim. So I have two additional forces, one right here on that side with 30 kilonewtons, one right here on that side with 30 kilonewtons that represent the force that you're getting from the internal pressure in the tire that is reacted, reacted at the rim. If we take a look at the results, uh, let's start from the first load step. So the first load step is, these are the stresses that you're getting just from pretensioning. Second, uh, let's take a look at the second load step at which I also add the, uh, the internal pressure. And um, so you can see that, um, this is also well highly exaggerated. That's <laughs> 90, 99 times uh, like the normal deflection that you will have. From the internal pressure, the thing that is most likely to happen if something fails is that those two sides of the rim just blow off, especially the pressure from the side of the tires are reacted right here on those flanges and those flanges mm -hmm. are pushed to the side. Um, you have a lever arm right here and more or less do a bending motion in this direction. And since your layers are oriented that way, it will basically, if something fails, I I, I would bet a, a, a crate of beer uh, on that. <laughs> I'm, I'm yeah. quite sure that the rim will uh, split somewhere right here on, um, on this line. So the stresses that we have is around uh, eight megapascals. Okay. A normal ABS filament has, and this is the interesting part, a strength of 40 to 50 megapascals if you load it in the optimal directions. This is all calculated with uh, fully dense material, so oh. like 100% infill or um, a mm -hmm. lot of parameters. I think you would probably be able to add pressures to five, six, seven bars until something fails. It would Just, create a loud bang, I think, if that whole... Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That doesn't yet take into consideration that also those flanges will start deforming due to the forces. Maybe what could happen at first is that the tire might even slip over, over the rim or over the flange right here mm -hmm. and blow out the inner tube at, at some point. But still, um, if you're only thinking about like the two or three bars, I think that should be totally doable. If you want to do it for uh, shits and giggles, um, try try to try to uh, inflate it to eight or ten bars, uh, but maybe warn your neighbors. 
Yeah, yeah, we're and going around the neighborhood and uh, I've already <laughs> worn some of them. <laughs> Since you are printing ABS and layer adhesion with ABS is usually a big problem. I would try to tune your printing settings in a way that you can increase or optimize your layer adhesion as much as you can. You have already uh, already heated chamber that that definitely helps a lot. Mm -hmm. We already talked about that last time printing temperatures rather go a bit on the hotter side yeah. than I on think the I'm printing side. at 260 degrees now yeah. and with a 1.2 millimeter nozzle yeah uh, what kind of hot end do you have in there the well, um, dice dice design uh, uh, pro the heating zone of the dice design pro hot end is not huge it is very interesting to take a look at your extrusion rates yeah. because if your extrusion rates are too high even using 260 degrees celsius on the nozzle you will not be able to properly melt the plastic that will also decrease uh, layer adhesion quite a bit i think it's it's counterintuitive that if your nozzle um, diameter increases mm -hmm. that you have more problems with uh, under extrusion because at first, you would say that a 0.2 millimeter nozzle requires a, uh, requires a lot more pressure to get filament through. Yeah. But the flow is way lower, so it's the opposite. It goes yeah. increasingly higher when you have uh, larger nozzle diameters. So with like a three times bigger than normal nozzle diameter and well, also increasing the layer height maybe by three, uh, you will have at the same printing speeds nine times more flow through yeah. your nozzle what you could be thinking about is is just print uh, a bunch of standing samples really a bit higher than normal because you're also working with a with a bigger nozzle and mm -hmm. then just um, print them at for example different speeds or at different temperatures even maybe raising the temperatures a little and 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 um, decreasing them a little and then just try to break them i would try to figure out if you if you are already at the optimum of of layer strength because this is something really important for abs and if your layer adhesion is is horrible the whole rim project might fall apart again maybe let's let's go one load step earlier again and um this is when i applied the pretension on your part if you tighten bolts um you usually measure the tightness of the bolts with a with a torque wrench and that torque you're applying results in an axial force or a pretension force in your bolt the big problem is if you, for example, take a look at, at the table for recommended tightening torques for M8 screws. These are sized in a way that you screw them in, well, usually steel. If you would apply the same tightening torques with a 3D printed or just a plastic part in general, the pretension will be so high that the stress below the head of the bolt is already way above uh, the yield stress of the material. So you will already be deforming and also therefore uh, damaging your part. I have one, one table right here open. So a recommended pretensioning torque for an M8 bolt is somewhere in the range of, of 20 Newton meters. So if you would try mm -hmm. to tighten those bolts, uh, those bolts right here to 20 Newton meters, um, I'm quite sure that you will damage your part and especially since your screw head directly sits in here and also uh, and, and pushes basically this layer down i think what would happen is that you would split your part right in this well small radius or in this small corner right here mm -hmm. i was calculating the maximum feasible pretension force so for example if you would tighten a bolt with 25 newton meters in an in m8 bolt it would give you 16 kilonewtons of pretension. Um, 16 kilonewtons would be way too high. I have created a small spreadsheet right here and calculated, for example, for your clamping bolts that you should at maximum apply a pretension force of 4.5 kilonewtons, which is only around 
three or four newton meters of tightening torque. Anything more will uh, might potentially damage your part and give you a bad time. You could improve that if you would put bigger washers under the print head or under the heads of the bolts mm -hmm. to increase uh, the surface area at which you um, well interface with your with your plastic part. Um, it's basically the same on the other side as well. Uh, make sure to not over tighten your bolts. The same goes with your wheel nuts or wheel bolts. Don't tighten them to 120 Newton meters. I don't know what you <laughs> used last time. Um, well, I didn't use a lot, but I also uh, find out that I made a mistake um, on that chamfer. I just designed yeah. a 45 degree uh, chamfer within yeah. there and the bolts uh, themselves are 60 degrees, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that was um, not the smartest move. Yeah, just screwed them down by hand and just felt like, mm, uh, uh, this is enough. <laughs> <laughs> My rough calculation said, okay, for those M M12 bolts, um, something around six, six kilo newtons per bolt is around 16, six, I, so I wouldn't go over 20 newton meters. The, the thing with pretension is, the pretension that you have in the bolt is highly, it's, it's massively depending on the friction between the bolt and the material you, you screw it in. So if you, if you bought new screws that are don't have a lot of lubrication on them and you screw them in here, a lot of your torque that you apply is just directly killed again by the friction between like the, the chamfer of the bolt or the conical part of the bolt and the surface of the pot right here. If you would lubricate this area, you have only little friction in here and most of the torque will be converted to an axial force. So what that means in the end, if you have a bolt that is greasy, you are way more likely to kill your part than if one that is not that greasy because <laughs> If it's greased, um, the same amount of torque will result in, in way more pretension. Maybe on the same remark, it is still important to properly tighten the balls. If I now say, okay, don't go too high with the, the tightening torques, that does mean that you also shouldn't go too low because the shear forces or the, the weight of the car is usually not transferred through the bolts into the rim, but basically um, through friction between the hub and uh, the rim. Mm -hmm. And the bolts are just there to have enough pretension that you have enough friction uh, that this force can be transmitted. So mm -hmm. if you would not tighten those bolts properly, uh, what's then happening is the bolts become the elements that transmit the force between here and there. And that would mean that not the potential that the bolts here, they're, they're pretty strong, but um, the holes right here, they might um, deform. So um, make sure that you still tighten them as, as much as you can, that you have a lot of friction between uh, the hub and your part. Maybe it's also a good idea to make sure that both are not greasy, just just in this case. Yeah, it's refreshing always... to hear it like this, because yeah. I, uh, I assumed that uh, the force will be at the side of those bolts. So we talked about pretension, we talked about the internal pressure, but then there is also the load case when uh, we when you basically lower your car on the tire. So as a first load step, I only added a vehicle load, which I assumed was something around two tons or 1,800 kilograms. So um, divided that by the four tires, that's around 450 kilograms or 4,500 newtons, just like rough values. Um, yep. Also interesting right here, I think and I haven't actually found that 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 much on the internet. Um, simulating wheels is is not totally trivial because how is the force 
of a tire transmitted to the rim and I was asking myself that for quite a while. Is it... I think if I have to guess it's uh, on the beat. So this is also what I assumed. So the 400 and, or 4500 newtons, the, I have um, applied them on these four surfaces that you can see marked right here in red. Mm -hmm. And at those locations, um, yeah, the, the force is basically applied. On the right side, we have the load case where we only applied the pretension force and the pressure of the tire. Mm -hmm. And on that side, what you can also see due to the deformation of the rim, uh, we also applied the weight of the car. So we can see, yeah, we have stress concentration right here because we apply the load from from down here, mm -hmm. and it, some, it somehow has to travel into the hub. Um, we do have stress concentrations right here, where we did not have any stresses before, of course, because there weren't any uh, any stresses transferred. But those stresses are in a very reasonable range. Pro, there we go. Um, just around, well, 10, 11, 12 megapascals. Those values are not in the range where I would be concerned that something happens once you lower your part. Uh, sorry, not your part, your car. Your car. <laughs> <laughs> Those stresses that we have right here, they are, again, in, well, in the printing plane. Um, so right here, we can kind of assume the normal material strength of ABS, so the around 40 to 50 megapascals. That's, um, the more I think about this, the more interesting the load cases get, because, well, it's the, the non-homogenic uh, material because of 3D mm -hmm. printing, and the enormous amount of load cases it has. Well, we have the, the pressure of the tire, um, we have the weight of the car, uh, what happens when you are going to steer it, uh, you get the strange torques uh, on it and uh, of yeah. course uh, braking, accelerating, well braking uh, is uh, even worse, yeah. uh, braking and steering together. I, I haven't added any acceleration or braking load cases or even steering load cases uh, for the moment, um, but I just as a, a safety calculation I added four times so like the whole weight of the car mm -hmm. onto one rim and you can still see the mesh is not perfectly nice but it's it's it's, it's a crude calculation we are here in the range of 35 megapascals that that's still in the range what abs should be able to handle i hope that with this design you will not have a really bad surprise right at the start when you lower it down so with fully dense this part would already be seven kilograms and this one would be another 4.5 kilograms now, i'm uh, quite close to fully dense because um the front part uh, if i print that it if i print that it would be at 4.5 kilos and i've got yeah. spools of five kilos so it's almost <laughs> full spool yeah I, I think that should be working this time i hope uh, because otherwise i uh, I would I would be kind of upset as well, but uh, you you still have have to take into consideration the uh, that uh, s simulating FDM 3D printed parts is something that you even hardly find in a lot of papers. Um, mm -hmm. Not even speaking of like commercial software that does like as a standard take all of that into consideration which is really interesting i think it would be something and it also will be something quite important in the future all right do, do you have any more questions um no well i have one question that's a bit unrelated to this um but that's more for the future because i'm uh, my plan is for the future to 